In the UK, bread is everywhere. It's part of our lives. When something's really good, we say, it's the best thing since sliced bread. In the Lord's Prayer, we don't say our daily rice or daily noodles. We say, give us our daily bread. And we sing, bread of heaven. That could go on. You know, after a life of baking, Paul's got a good nose for sniffing out a flowery bap. I noticed when I've been going around Tokyo, actually, that they do have bakeries. And I saw queues going around the block on some occasion early in the morning waiting for these bakeries to open. Then I discovered that the oldest bakery in Tokyo is actually just around the corner from the hotel. Paul's hotel and the bakery are in Ginza district, the posh part where Paul saw those expensive melons. All the shops are upmarket here, including Tokyo's oldest bakery, Kumuraya, opened in 1869. It's taken me aback a little bit, to be honest, because I thought this was predominantly a rice-based culture, but I never expected to see that in Japan. And so we observe the Hollywood in his natural habitat. The quality here looks amazing. It's precision. It's the crumb structure. It's the look of it. I mean, I'm really genuinely <laughs> shocked. And there's some stuff in here I really want to try, actually, because I've never seen them before. This one in particular. Could I try this one, please? Hmm, we may be in here for a while. Now, this is melon bread with cream. Now, I've never seen anything like this. But what I'm curious to see is melon really has no inherent flavor. It'll be lost in a bread. It smells of melon. I am actually getting melon. It's like um, a gloopy, blitzed up melon inside a bread that's light, it's fluffy, it's crispy, it's very sweet. A lot of the bread I saw, actually, was very familiar to me, but it did have a slight twist. Now, if you look at that there, it's a Danish pastry with cheese inside it. Actually, I prefer that over the custard. That's crazy. Can I try a scone? Plain scones. Bet they fly off the shelf. Now, the secret is, with a good scone, is the shine on the top, nice and straight at the sides, and a decent amount of raisins in there. I'm in Tokyo. I'm eating something that comes straight from the Queen's afternoon tea menu. I mean, that is staggering. Natural split down the middle. It smells like a scone. I didn't expect this. It's a fantastic scone. And next up, the Star Bake, a wholly homegrown Japanese obsession. It's called Anpan. An, it's like a sort of red paste thing, but pan, pan is bread, it's like it is in France. They make and sell up to 10,000 anpans each day in this shop alone. And when Paul asked nicely, they agreed to show him the bakery. Yeah, that fits. <laughs> the dough for anpan takes 60 hours to make. Now that's a slow rise. Then each morning they do the rest in here, kneading, rolling, filling them with red bean paste and baking thousands of them. The flour is wheat flour. Bread flour. Bread flour. Ah, OK. Shioto, sato, yeah. egg. Egg. And butter. So it is basically an enriched dough. And the bean paste is going in the middle. Hi. It's a bit like a brioche. And then you egg wash the top. Ah, nuriwas. Yeah. And then in the oven. Hi. How long in the oven? Eight minutes. Eight minutes. <laughs> The Japanese eat around five million anpan every day, and it was in this very shop that anpan was invented by a retired samurai, Yasube Kimura, in 1874. <laughs> and so to the tasting bit. He's good at this. About 20 years ago, I was in this academy of bakers, and we got offered jobs all over the world, and jobs were being offered for me in Japan. And I was thinking, they don't make bread. How wrong was I? I could have been living here now. <laughs> Making amber. <laughs> this is going to be interesting. I'm 
I'm trying to identify the flavors. This is the red bean paste. It's got the texture, a little bit of a kidney bean. Remember fig biscuits when you were a kid? And you got that chew. That's what it's like inside there. A hint of cinnamon in there as well. The bread is brioche-like, but it's also like the softest flowery bap that you've ever had in your life. They're really tasty. They're quite Moorish, actually. To be honest, I was gobsmacked. I mean, we've been making bread in the West now for four or 5,000 years, and I think we're pretty good at it. However, the Japanese have only been making it for 150 years or so, and they've mastered it already. The stuff in that shop was absolutely top draw. I'm impressed. Whatever they touch, they make the best of. 